What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Johnny Mac here. Just wanted to give you a heads up that if you are looking for a community that is open to discussion as far as mentorship, conservation, the wild, becoming a better person, and all of that, there is a group for you on Facebook, and it is called Soul Seekers. Soul Seekers, we are all about making ourselves a better person. We're all about making sure hunting lasts for generations to come and encouraging people to get plugged in. Whether you are someone who has something to give or someone who needs to soak it up like a sponge, this is a community for you and I encourage you, I strongly encourage you that if you're on Facebook to join Soul Seekers and if you're not on Facebook, hop on there just for that group. It is only gonna be as powerful as we all make it. And so just remember that life happens for you, it doesn't happen to you, and that you can't outgive good. You can't outgive good, people. I want you to understand that, and I want you to believe it, because when we believe that and we lead with courage and we lead with intention, lives are changed, lives are transformed, just like on this podcast, Transformation Through Primal Adventure. Be blessed. Enjoy this episode. Talk soon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship as conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by the Crazy Elk Company. Based out of the state of Washington with products made in America, they are providing solutions with gear to problems you didn't even know you had. Their tag wall is one of those solutions, and I had the pleasure of using it on all of my hunts this last year, and it is now a mainstay in my kill kit. The tag wall is a water-resistant zippered pouch that comes with its own reusable zip ties to safely and securely store your notch tag for quick and easy access. For more information, go to crazyelkcompany.com and use the code SOULFUL with a capital S to save 20% at checkout. Be blessed, everyone, and as always, stay soulful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack, and today we're diving into the topic of bear hunting, but in a manner in which I've never done, I have no experience, but I heard about this, and I'm even presenting in combination a seminar at the Western Hunt Expo with Jana Waller. And we were talking about spot and stock bear hunting, baiting for bears. And she was like, well, we got to talk about hound hunting for bears. And I was like, sounds great. I have no idea what, what we talk about. I have no experience with that. And she's like, I got just the guy. And so she recommended TJ Pace from Bar X Hounds out of the state of Utah as her go-to. And I was like, all right, let's talk to TJ. Let's get him on an episode. And so if you got to read Jana Waller's Bear Hunting uh, Magazine article where she shoots a bear with a desert, uh, Magnum Research Desert Eagle pistol, that was the hunt with TJ and his hounds. TJ... Thanks for coming on the show, bro. How you doing? Dude, I'm good. I'm glad to be here. It is always a good time when we're here. I forgot to say, I poured myself a glass of, of bourbon, and I don't know if you're a drinker or whatever, but it's always nice to sit down with a glass and have a great conversation about hunting. So, <laughs> Yeah. So, brother, how did you get into the hound business? How did you get, like, and at what point were you like, wait a minute, these dogs can chase bears? Or, <laughs> like, what's the story? So, right out of high school, I had a couple buddies, and we got into it. We just had some pups, and we was just running around chasing raccoons. We got a lot of orchards around here. We just chased raccoons and stuff. Then you kind of go from that into lion hunting got a lot of lions here in the winter and it's easy it's easy to find a lion and it's relatively put pretty easy to catch a lion you cut a fresh track in the snow i mean 
you stick a dog's nose in it, man, and they just go. <laughs> and so I did that for a long time. And like the past seven years, I've been really into bear hunting because I just love it. Dude, it's just so much more fun. There's no snow. You're in the warm weather. You can get around everywhere. You're not fighting snowmobiles and all that junk when you're hunting lions, you know. But And so that's just how it's been. I've just been with it forever and stuck with I don't know. I just love it, man. Dude, I love it. I, you know, when I was talking with Jana about this whole concept of, of hunting bears with hounds, I, for some reason, got confused with it being cougar hunting and being like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, tracking them in the snow. She's like, oh, no, it's it's yeah. not a winter thing. It's more of a springtime hunt. Is that what it's, it's- It runs from, here in Utah, it goes from spring clear till the end of September. Sweet. And that, like, we hunt them from, they start the hunt, the spring hunt in March, but they don't really come out till the end of April, you know, get moving end of April. And then the whole month of May, you can just, that is when it's just awesome in the spring. And the weather's not too hot yet, you know, and the dogs, they can really, they can really hunt because they're not overheating. And then June is shut down and we have just bait hunts that are running June. And then July opens back up and then that's a full month of July is dog training season. Nobody's killing anything. It's just catching bears, man. (laughs) Start real early in the morning and hunt them. But you're usually done in July. You're usually done by 10 because... 80 degrees, your dogs will start shutting down. Right. It just gets too hot for them to run that hard. When when you're talking about hounds running down bears, you know, like a cat will just jump up trees. Like, they're just, like, yeah. off a rock cliff. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Woo! You know? Yeah. What What is what is a pursuit of a bear with hounds like? I mean, are your dogs having to run Dude. as much? Oh, so here's a little. Lions have really small lungs. So when you jump a lion, you can catch a lion off like a two day old track in the snow because they're not traveling very far. And once you jump a lion, they're only going five, 600 yards most of the time and they're climbing a tree. A bear, dude, you jump a bear, like you don't cold trail bears because they cover. So they're always moving. They're always like, moving. Spot and stalk and they're always moving. They're always looking for stuff. It's like when you jump a bear, if that bear doesn't want to climb a tree, he won't. Like, <laughs> dude, if you don't have dogs that are willing to get in there and kind of get g- aggressive and pull some hair, dude, that bear will just walk all day long. And your dogs will sit back and bark at him and bark at him. And, dude, we've seen bears just sit down in big, like, cow ponds out here. We get these big cow ponds that are out, you know, watering cows. A bear will just sit down in there in the middle of the day. <laughs> Just wait, dude. They'll just relax, like, and there'll be dogs on the bank barking at him. That bear catches his breath and he decides, well, I'll start going again. They'll get up and just start walking again, dude. So if you don't, like, I, if you don't have dogs that really are kind of aggressive, and some bears just won't treat, they yeah. just won't, dude. That is, and so- they can. Dude, the world is flat to a bear. Like, they go uphill just as fast as they go downhill. (laughs) Dude, I know exactly. You talking and saying that statement right there, it's like, yes, because the terrain in which I've been to hunt black bears up in the Cascade Mountains where, you know, the bushes are growing off the hill sideways and then curling up. So as you're going uphill, (laughs) you're kind of having to grab the bushes to, like, get yourself going. And I'm just like, dude, these bears just up and down, up and down, you know, up in the morning, down the (laughs) midday, up, you know, and I'm just like, dude, wow. And you're saying they're just, they're, it, the world is flat to them. I'm like, yes, that makes total sense. It also goes perfect into their personality because if a, a bear is an apex predator, what does it have to have fear of? Yeah. Like, 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 exactly. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> He's the baddest dude on on the on the planet in North America, yep. and you're chasing him with dogs. What what type does it take a special type of dog to like? Yeah, is it any yep. hounds so like, or is there a specific no, like bear dog? So, well, as far as the breed of hounds, any 
any hound dog, I'm not even going to say hound dog because they run like curs and them Airedales and stuff like that. They run those on bears, but it is a definite cross from a lion dog to a bear dog. Like you will never, and I shouldn't say never, but you will struggle hard, hard to catch a bear with lion dogs just because lion dogs don't have that aggressive aggression. They don't have that speed. They're, when you're hunting lion, you want that dog to use his nose and you want him to work a track out. When you're hunting a bear, you want that dog's head straight in the air, running as fast as he can. And when he sees something that's dark, just to start biting. Like, <laughs> so you won't catch, like, a bear dog is just way more, they're just wound up. Like, the adrenaline gets into them and they just get crazy. So- like, it is the wildest thing. So I've the only animals I've ever hunted over a dog is upland bird. And yeah. that relationship between the owner and the dog, it's an art form in itself. And you know, mm-hmm. it's like, why do you love upland bird hunting so much? It's like because I get to see my dog do what's natural to it. Like there's a yep. certain what they love to do. Yes. So what is it like hunting over dogs for bears? Because bear hunting for me is the ultimate like you get me in the mountains of in August in the huckleberry fields and it's go time. I'll, I could spend my entire summer there <laughs> and I could shoot nothing but bears and be happy and content. But what is it like hunting, <laughs> hunting over dogs? Like how many miles are you expected to put in? Like you said, a bear will just walk forever, but I mean, what's typical. So usually what you'll do, like with Jana's hunt, is we'll ride around in the truck or side-by-sides, and you just strike the roads. You put dogs up on the rack, and a bear will come down across that road in the morning. Well, they stink. I mean, you know, they just stink. And them dogs, man, they can smell them. And so you'll drive, and we call it striking. So you'll strike a bear, and those dogs on the rack, as soon as they smell a bear, they start barking. And so you just let a few go, and once they get going, if they hit it – They'll hit it and get rolling. Then you just start filtering other dogs. And once once that starts, there's, I mean, you can kick out at seven o'clock in the morning. And if it's a nice, cool day, I mean, you could be there till four or five o'clock in the afternoon and still not get it caught. It's just, I mean, but, and that's kind of a little bit of a dramatic. Most bears, they, they'll catch, they tree. I mean, chase them for a few hours they usually find a spot and climb up a tree i mean we call them bear trees just because it has to be big enough to hold a bear in it you know right you're running them down in the oak brush and stuff you'll never you got to get them to come out of that oak brush and run them up under the pines interesting some days like with Jana, i think that first day we drove like 120 miles in the truck and then we probably hiked close to eight ten miles just trying to find a track or a scent in them canyons. And we never found nothing that in first days. Wow. And then we drove down and I mean, we drove down one morning and hit right off first thing, right on the road. And it was, a, it ended up being a really good bear. But. You know, I always get a kick out of um, the, I, I've, I got into hunting because I was a backpacker for a long time. And so and I'm also a school teacher. And so the, and I was a high school football coach. And so, August, month of August for me was those first two weeks was backpacking season. And when I learned how to start hunting and that bear opens August 1st, you know, I was like, oh, I'm a bear hunter because elk season with the beginning of school and deer season with coaching football, like get out of here. I'm (laughs) never, I'm never going to be successful if I'm hunting (laughs) two days out of an entire season. But so, so bears really kicked off for me. The issue is, is as I've progressed in age, and I'm not old by any means, and I'm, I'm athletic, and I'm, I'm fit, and I like to work out and push myself, but there are days where this idea of the backcountry hunts is so, oh, what's the word, like dreamy, like it's this, mm-hmm. it's so picture, picture perfect, serene, and like, oh, we're going to be there with nobody, and all this stuff, and then you realize the terrain you're hunting, and you're like, dude, this really is kicking the crap out of me. And so I always joke, and how I'm tying this into what you just shared was, I always joke about starting the uh, the National Road Hunters of America Association. 
<laughs> because sometimes I'm like, you know, by by late October into November, I'm like, man, I could really go for a road hunt right about now. And <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yep. So, it, and those make for the longest days, and you're sitting in that truck all day waiting for a bark. Like, oh, it just makes miserable days. Oh man. Okay, so what what states can you actually hunt bears in with hounds, and is it? a separate season or is it just a general bear tag and you can run hounds if you have access to them? Uh, to t- I'm so you can you hunt those. bears. Yeah. All the Western States, you can hunt bears with, uh, dogs, except for like no California, no Washington, but, and no, no Washington and no Colorado, but you can hunt them in New Mexico, Arizona, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, yeah, all of those. Wyoming but as and far Montana as, also oh, I think yeah, just Wyoming kicked off this Montana. year as well. Yep. Yep. But like for here in Utah, we have separate dates for bait and uh, dogs. And in New Mexico, I think they have separate too. Mm. I don't think you can bait. It's more of a hound thing down there. And the other, uh, I do both. I mean, there's plenty of people up there and do both. Arizona, I don't know their bait laws. It's all just fall hound dogs down there. And then Nevada. Nevada's a draw. You have to draw a tag in Nevada to even go over there and chase them. Hmm. Because I don't think they have a very healthy bear population in Nevada. I was going to say, if you're baiting for bears and you're running hounds at the same time, (laughs) how often are your hounds finding a bait site? Dude, all the time. So... That's what happened here in Utah is we had to separate it because it was all just the same. It ran from the end of March to the end of May, bait and hounds at the same time. Well, no offense to the guys that are hauling bait, but they don't want to haul it very far off the side of the road. Right. You know, they're going 200 yards off the side of the road, setting up their bait. Well, you got six bears hitting that thing. And I drive my truck through there at four o'clock in the morning. Them dogs are going to smell those bears. Right. Don't run them out of there. <laughs> yeah, it's got to. You know, bait hunters, they'll be sitting in their stands, and you get a pack of dogs running through there. So it's way frustrating for them. Mm-hmm. But on the hound side of it is, how are you supposed to know, you know? Right. You, the bear's crossing the road. You hit a strike. You don't. There's no way to tell. Right, right. So, Okay, so I think we got off this a little bit, and I didn't actually push for an answer because oh. I got distracted with, with everything <laughs> I was talking about. Because I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy shop right now. I'm like, okay, how can I get down and hunt with TJ? Because this sounds amazing. <laughs> what is it like hunting over dogs for bears? The dogs? That was the question okay. that, that we didn't yeah, answer. I did get off on that one. <laughs> it is just, once you're hunting and you're going, it is excitement the whole time it is i mean it's not like hunting anything else because nothing else matters i mean you could walk in there you could be shooting a coyote and the dogs will be going i mean you don't have to be quiet it's noisy you can be loud hooting and hollering taking pictures i mean it is just the adrenaline rush you get off of it is beyond anything Mm -hmm. i mean especially for somebody who's never been around and it's just noisy I have 13 dogs. Like you imagine that many dogs barking at the same time. Right. It is just utter noise. I mean, and it's, it gets in you, man. It just makes you excited. And you just love it. And yeah. Yeah. It's a special That's, feeling seeing animals do what they are meant to do. Yeah. You know, and it, not like you were saying with the birds, when you, like when people come hunting with me, they, you know, they want to see the bear and, they want to experience the strike and they're running, you know. And but for me, it's strictly like I just want to see what the dogs are doing. Yeah. I got young dogs. I want to see what they're doing. I want to see, you know, you got your old dogs that are trained. You know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But them young dogs, you want to see because it. I mean, it makes you proud to see what you've raised up. And them dogs, like you say, them dogs will. They will run themselves to death trying to catch a bear. Just because they, I mean, they love it. They yeah. know when I come walking out there with my collars, man, my GPS collars, instant attitude change. Them dogs know exactly what we're doing, and they are <laughs> ready to party. That is so awesome. Uh, so 
yeah, this, I guess this is one of the things that people people don't really experience. And this happened with me for my very first time I shot a bear. Is you know, you shoot a deer, you shoot an elk, you shoot an ungulate. You're not really afraid to walk up on it as much. But when you walk up on a bear, you're like, man, I really hope this thing's dead because <laughs> it's got teeth and claws yep. and all this. So when people are hunting, so let's say they, they hire you, they go, they want to go hunt bears over hounds. It is an experience that they'll never truly understand until they're there because seeing a bear in a zoo is not the same. And spot and stock hunting is you usually see them out at hundreds and hundreds of yards. And then rarely if you bait is, is something, but they're constantly spooking in and out or watching their backs. Mm -hmm. You, you tree a bear. It's like you get full access to it to really check it out. Yeah. Like you get, and I'm, I have no, no problem with spot and stock hunters or bait, not bait hunters or anything, but my big thing is, you catch it with dogs, you are right there. You can see exactly what that bear is. You can know if it's a boar, if it's a sow, if it's got cubs, anything. I mean, you know the color of it. You are right there. Most of the time, a bear won't go up a tree 10 feet. I mean, they, back to, they are just there to catch their breath. Yeah. Because as soon as you get, the, you get there to a tree and that bear's there, you ch- tie those dogs up. And you slide back 10, 15 feet, that bear will come right down on top of you. Really? I mean, they don't. They and it's the craziest thing. They'll just sink their claws in that bark and just slide. Bark just shoots everywhere and they hit the ground and they're gone. So when you're hunting bears, uh, are you shooting them out of the tree or are you letting them come yeah. back down to the yep. ground and, the, and then taking a shot? No, I mean, we I've had a few incidences where you get a big, mean, older boar that won't climb a tree and it you're on the ground with it and you're shooting right there on the ground, but you're still within 20 feet of it. Yeah. I mean, you're right there on top of it shooting. And that, dude, that is the most exciting thing you'll ever do in your life. Yep. I mean, it's just crazy. Yep. But 99% of the time they're in a tree. You're right there. You got all day to sit there and figure out what you're going to do. And if it's a bear you want to take and you know, that's, have- Okay. You like the look of it. Yeah, I was going to say, so I got a couple questions, and this may sound insensitive <laughs> to the people who are like, you know, we got to keep hunting, make it look nice, and, you know, package it just right. <laughs> I love duck hunting and goose hunting or bird hunting when you shoot something out of the sky and it falls directly <laughs> down rather than like taking the coasting, the coasting long range fall. It, it just falls like a pile of bricks, just wham. I get a kick out of it. It really, you know, you see the mud splatter from, <laughs> from ducks and it's like, whoa, you hear the sound of it hitting the ground. What is it like shooting an animal the size of a bear out of a tree? When it hits the ground, I mean, is it bouncing off of branches typically? Do they get that death moan right away also? What, what is that experience like? So if they, I mean, obviously we always want them to die before they hit the ground. Just because it can turn into a nasty mess if they hit the ground and they're still way alive. Right. But like Janice Bear, dude, that thing was, it was so far up that tree and she shot it and that thing broke a branch on its way down. But I don't, you really can't see it in the picture, in the video, but it was like a six inch branch and it was probably 15 feet long <laughs> and it snapped that, it hit the ground, man. We all you felt it shaking through. But it was dead long before it even come close to hitting the ground. It's so crazy. But I've had a few that I usually try chaining my dogs back just so when they do hit the ground, if they're not dead, we don't end up with just a bunch of vet bills. Because that I've had them, like I was saying, they'll come out of the tree when you get there. And they will. I mean, I've had it to where you get to a tree, not bear sees you, and it's like, nope, I'm not. We're leaving. And he'll come down that tree and then dogs will just start just pile on them. Well, that bear will just start biting and swatting everything and getting out. And you just end up with a bunch of cut up dogs. I mean, <laughs> you know, people are and, and here's the interesting thing about like the anti hunting world, the, the, the people who want to take away hunting. They'll say, 
that is cruel not only yeah. to the dogs but also to the bear how dare you what yep. do, what do you have to say about that being someone who's a hound because they get attacked all the time oh yeah we're hound guys are always under the brunt of just they think you know we're beating dogs and just these dogs are just as a working animal and you're just you barely feed them because you get out there in the summer and those dogs it's hard like I feed really high quality food because I expect a lot out of them dogs and I treat them really well, but it's hard to keep weight on a dog when they're running that many miles a day. It doesn't, I mean, we feed them straight beef fat and you still can't, you can still see all their ribs. I mean, it is very hard. And so we get people that pick dogs up that are on dirt roads. I mean, they're camping, they're enjoying the outdoors, but they'll pick them up. And you get with them and swing back by or whatever, get them picked up. And that's the first thing they always say. I mean, we've been feeding this dog all day. He's just been, he's hungry. We've been feeding. I had this one lady tell me, he really likes my scones. I've been feeding him scones all day. He hasn't wanted to leave. And I'm, well, yeah, because you're feeding him scones. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. If I was hanging out at a bakery, I wouldn't want to leave either. <laughs> <laughs> but they see him and they think that we're, beating them and abusing them and the dogs hate it well i mean I'm, i've owned a lot of dogs in my day if a dog doesn't want to do it there ain't nothing you can do to make him do it totally you know totally if they are they are bred for this they i mean it is in them you know they it's love it it's really interesting <laughs> i can't believe I, I just thought of this but you're talking about how these dogs they'll just run and it's hard to keep weight on them because when you run, you burn a ton of calories. And if you ask the average human, and I do mean average, what, how many miles they go a day, they're probably maybe hitting two. Maybe yep. hitting two miles a day. Well, I can tell you right now, and, I, and you don't know this about me, but I actually uh, have, I'm an ultra marathon runner. And now I haven't done it like a tremendous amount because I'm also figuring out how to hunt and be a great father and a husband and, you know, still keep my day job and all these <laughs> other things. But what I can tell you is that when I ran 40 miles one day, I burned, let's see, I burned about a thousand calories an hour when I'm running and it took me seven hours to run 40 miles. So I burned over 7,000 calories in seven hours. It's like, dude, you know how much you have to eat just to replace the calories from running just that? Yeah. It's insane. That, that, that doesn't even count the calories you just need to consume to keep your body alive. And so it yep. makes sense that when you're saying, well, I'm, I'm treating these dogs actually really well, but they can't keep the weight on. I feel like this is the one thing where – you know, I, I hate to say it because I'm a, I'm also a physical education teacher. Is like, stop being so fat and lazy. Like, get uh, get up off the couch and understand how tired and hungry you get when you're putting in a lot of effort. Not a little mm -hmm. bit, not some. Yeah. But like, you're doing what you're a high performance machine, and look at what your body deserves. You don't put regular gasoline in a Ferrari. Or you yep. know, in a Porsche, dude. You have, I said you, that you have to yep. put that premium, and you gotta, you, you know, you want the yep. high output, you gotta put the high input. So you gotta put it into them, and it. I mean, our stuff down here is really straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, and then dog. I mean, tons and tons, tens of thousands of calories a day. I mean, and then you figure most guys come, they want to hunt for seven days, so you hunt for seven days, and. It just takes a lot of feed. And yeah. They look mangy, but they're not. <laughs> and and they're loved. And that's like, yeah. oh, man. Dude, you're – Yeah. TJ, I don't know how we're going to make this happen, but I got to get I gotta get on some, some hunts with you and run some hounds, man, because you're getting the juices flowing. I will tell you, my very first bear that I ever killed that kicked off my whole – because my, a bear was my very first animal. And I chased it down on foot wearing Birkenstocks. It was spotted across the way. I didn't have a gun. Um, 
I was with two other guys, and they took off before me, but I didn't really believe that they saw a, a bear, all this. And so I kind of just, like, I put, I slipped, because my camp shoes. I, a lot of people, they love the croc life. I'm like, no, yeah. man, I'm a Birkenstock dude. I'm, I'm packing those corks <laughs> in to the back country, and we're having some fun. Well, I, I slip on my Birkenstocks, and I, I jog up to them, and they're standing there, standing there with both their rifles. And, and all of a sudden, I'm like, it's right there, as it hops up over a tree in a bush and, like, takes off. And they're like, where, where? I'm like, it's right there, because I didn't have a gun. I was like, you can shoot it. <laughs> and quickly, my, my, my good hunting partner, Tony, two-shot Tony, he goes, here, take my gun. <laughs> and he turns, he hands me his gun. And I'm in shorts and Birkenstocks, and I'm sprinting as fast as I can up in the back country <laughs> of the state of Washington. And I run probably uh, it's probably about 400 yards that I end up running because of the terrain to catch up to it. But I knew that there was this little creek and a draw. So I got, I got up to this, and I just stopped and I waited. And sure enough, 30 seconds later, this black bear pops out at 30 yards and just stares me dead in the eyes. And I'm like, oh. and I pull up the gun and I, I shoot it. And it was the first time I heard a death moan. This first time I walked up on an animal and I was just like, holy crap, I just did this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. And so it's funny that I know what it's like to chase bears. But I want to let yeah. someone else do the work, and then I want to I want to follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh well, yeah, it's a thing. The dogs love doing the work. You just let them. Man, that's awesome. Okay, so so what are some things that people need to understand about? Like, let's say they want to hire you, and they want to they want to get you to go run some dogs and and come to Utah and hunt some bears. Is out of state tag for is is it over the counter for bears in Utah? No, no, we have a few, I think there's three over this over the counter units for the spring in Utah. Everything else is draw mm. balls draw. And then all of our spring, other spring units are draw. So there's two, I think, like, I think there's three, one unit is all private property and there's a lot of cabins and they get better problems in the spring. So that they put that over the counter just to try to help those cabin people. And then the other two units, I mean, there's bears there. It's just you hunt a little bit harder to find them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But as far as draws, I mean, this year, are they upped our tags as far as draw as our draw tags across the board a bunch? I yeah. mean, they're really starting to pour the tags on. So odds for non-residents will start getting better and better. Okay. I just as far as drawing the tag, I per I picked up ten acres of land in Montana this last summer and I'm really, I've never like truly hunted out of state. And so I am like, okay, what can I hunt in Montana right now? Yeah. And, and all that. But now that Jana was telling me that they started bear hunting with hounds in Montana. I'm like, Oh, this might be an opportunity. TJ, do you yeah. travel? Do you want to? <laughs> Dude, I would, I would be up for it a hundred percent. The only thing that scares me about Montana is the grizzlies. Yeah, that's a good point. Your dogs are not going to know the difference between, a, you know, the smell of a black bear and the smell of a grizzly. Mm -hmm. So if you run down some big old Volkswagen-sized grizzly, <laughs> he might just sit there and eat every dog you have and just go on his way. He's going to be like, thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> 13, where's number 14? Right? Dude, that's a really good point. I never thought about that. Okay, so here's yeah. one of the questions that really uh, intrigues me is I am a huge bear pelt fan. I love a good bear rug. And not even that it has yeah. to be like full-on mounted rug. I like a soft tan. And I'm always wondering what – when because the, these bears, these dogs nip at the bears, right? And at yeah. the cougars. Yep. And they're constantly like – Yep. Is that ruining the hide? No, no, not at all. Usually, like, that's kind of the reward. They sh We shoot it. It'll fall out of the tree. Before we do anything, all of the dogs all run down there, and they'll just pile on it and start biting at it and pulling its hair. And Only spots it'll kind of, 
and I've never had a, have an issue. My only thing would be like its face, the whiskers, or its ears. Yep. You get a dog that grabs a hold of an ear and just starts ripping at it, you know. Yep. But you're usually standing there and you keep them off. And then another kind of spot is the like your bullet hole where your wound is. They'll get it right there and try to pick at it a little bit, but. That stuff, I mean, you know, that hide's so thick, it's not, you're not going to sit there and let them, like, pull hair out or nothing. Right, right. They're just biting on it. They don't, it doesn't hurt them a bit. What type I've of, never seen anything get too crazy, you know. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a good point. What type of exit wounds do you typically get from, from bears up in a tree? Because you don't typically shoot an animal from underneath it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> You know, it's always uh, a lot thinner under there than it is on the. Yeah, back. it. I to tell you the truth, it just seems about normal. Yeah, I mean a thirty thirty. Everybody shoots them with a thirty thirty rifle, and thirty. I mean, they're blowing a <laughs> baseball size hole out the back of it. You know, <laughs> a few guys. I've had a few guys shoot them with bows, and it just that arrow just zips right through them. Unless they hit something way solid, hit a solid shoulder blade or whatnot, but most of the time it just zips through them. Yeah, and then, yeah, no, I, it's about the same as everything. A couple things. Number one, I when I was researching thirty thirties, actually no, it was forty five seventy. I want a I want a Marlin forty five seventy. Yeah, the gun that what's his name from Jurassic Park carries around. Um, Chris Pratt, when he's rolling in Jurassic World, he's got that sweet Marlin. Yeah, like, dude, got I, that sweet lever. I want that yeah. so bad. Um, but I really, my goal, this was this last year, but it didn't happen because this year, 2021, was a hot, hot mess here in the Mac house. Um, but my goal, I want to arrow a bear. I really want to just go full draw on a bear and be like, let's dance. Let's do this. And I feel like... You know, there's nothing more primal than being able to shoot something with a bow and that being so close, especially not over bait, you know, because I, I, yeah. you know, I was like, I, I totally want to experience bait hunting, but shooting a bear that just got done eating a pastry, <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I could be wrong. I have bait hunted and I know a lot of guys that have, and you got to picture of a bear with a <laughs> cherry filled cake hanging out i mean it's cool you're still bear hunting but yeah it, no comparison it's you know? it's always funny you know they, they say you are what you eat right and i love those those berry <laughs> bears because they've just been you know munching the nice and sweet meat but it's hard to you know you get a little debbie bear and all of a sudden it's like hey now <laughs> <laughs> Can I get some, you know, get some oatmeal Debbie cream bear. pie bear? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to beat that. <laughs> right? A little dessert with my meat. Anyways, <laughs> TJ, uh, brother, I cannot wait for us to get together in person because we're going to have a good time at the yeah. expo. Yeah. Uh, by the way. It should be way fun. By the way, listeners, if you, I, I don't know when this is going to release as far as this expo might have already happened. However, if you are interested in hunting with TJ and his hounds, TJ, how do people get a hold of you? Well, I mean, I know you run Bar X Hounds. I found you on Facebook, but what's the best way for people to connect with you? Uh, so I have TJ Pace 88 that's on Instagram. That's kind of, I don't do much with Facebook. It's just, I, yeah, I don't do much with Facebook, but I have that. And then my Instagram, I do a lot with it. And then I just, I mean, my phone number. You want me to just give me my phone number? Do you, do I mean, you is feel, that a do you feel safe enough doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. If I get a number that I don't want to answer, I just don't answer. There you go. Let it rip. Let it rip. It's 801-602-0596. Nice. Don't be calling that yeah, expecting don't. Jenny to pick up. You got to... <laughs> That's old TJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I freaking love it. TJ, what? Uh, how often do you do you run your dogs for... For bears is it like you know a couple times a season so, or is it no 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 it's so that in just for instance like when i was saying here in april we don't 
the bears aren't moving real good dude i will damn near kill myself trying i try to catch a bear every year in april just because around here nobody does there's just still way too much snow the bears aren't moving so i like give myself a personal challenge to find a bear yeah and then come may the about the last three weeks of may i'll take that whole three weeks off of work and i'll hunt every day it's just because like i say i mean when it comes my whole household i got kids and a wife my whole family is revolved around these dogs like my wife goes my kids go i mean we got side by side it is our whole it's what we do you know yeah and then we take june off because we can't hunt here in the state in june and then the entire month of july we'll hunt the entire month i mean we'll go camping a different place every week and just hunt because i mean that's all you're doing is training dogs now in the month of july is it actually legal to shoot them or you no okay nope it's just a dog training month gotcha so gotcha everybody can i mean and you just get out there and hunt and everybody just trains but and then our fall hunt starts usually like right around the third week of august and we'll run till each unit's a little bit different we kind of Different them for the elk, rifle elk hunt for our big bull hunt. And they usually run till about the middle of end of September. Mm. And so here in the fall, they don't, uh, they don't want you just out running around just for fun. So you have to have a kill tag here in the fall to run dogs. And I'll usually have two or three, yeah. you know. Yeah. And problem is, is once you kill in the fall, you're done. So whoever is unlucky enough to get stuck with me. I'll talk him out of every bear till about the second week of September. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell him, oh, we got another couple weeks, man. Don't, we can find more bears. Cause in the fall, I mean, you guys know, spot stalking those bears in the fall, they move all day, all day. I mean, they get up and they move all morning, all day, all night. I'm I mean, you can catch, yes. you can catch a bear first thing in the morning, go have lunch, come back, catch another bear. In the afternoon i'm I mean, a believer at th- it is just 3 p.m awesome. is golden for bears like three yeah. in the afternoon Dude. Like the hot, hot of the sun and yet they're out feeding they're out yeah it's so yep. wild and and then like <clears throat> i started going down to new mexico last year because their fall bear hunt is over the counter and so it runs from set first to september and they do quotas so once their quotas fail then the units shut down but their quotas or in the hundreds there. I mean, there's a couple of little units that close around 30, 40 bears, but most of their units will run clear Intel. Like I went down there last year at the end of October and still killed a really nice bear for my brother. Man. That's, so I mean, cool. so we hunt bears every day we can all <laughs> summer from spring clear till October, man. It's I, a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. It is. No, if you're getting into it as a hobby, yeah, you'll probably catch one or two bears and you'll have fun, you know, but if you're getting into it to be successful, you, it's full blown lifestyle, man. I mean, okay. Let me ask you, you, let me ask you a couple like tactic questions. So uh, here I am spring, spring bear hunting spot and stock style. I'm hunting that green grass line. I'm looking for creeks and I'm hunting that green grass line. Is it the same thing when it comes to hound hunting in the spring? And then we're also going to take this into the fall where, you know, I'm finding the ripe berries and that's where like, do you, yeah. is that are you hunting the exact same way? Spot yeah, and stock Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, with the dogs, you just try to find where those bears are moving. Cause you just, I mean, it's hard. It's not hard, but. When you got dogs, you don't just sit and wait. You got to move all that country, hike canyons, walk big draws, just to try to get a scent to find one, get it going. And so you're pretty much, yeah, you're right there on the snow line, right on that green, that real green little grass. Same thing. And then in the fall, I mean, down here, we don't have, we got raspberries and stuff, but you're acorn hunting down here in the fall. Yeah. I mean, grass and acorn. And then, uh, you know, Dude, we get getting into like choke cherries and stuff like that. And the bad choke cherries and dead cows, dude, dead cows are awesome. We get tons of dead moo cows. 
Like you find a dead moo cow on the side of the road, you give it a couple weeks when it's nice and stinky, there'll be a bear on it. But do you want to eat a bear like that? I don't know. I mean, that, that comes is- on the guy who shoots. <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good I point i mean that, that, that every year so every year like our bear hunt will be running the same time as our archery deer hunt and archery elk come over and every year i will find dead deer and elk that'll have an arrow in them and then we'll always start a bear off it it's mm. just if it gets wounded off the road and goes down in there a couple hundred yards and nobody finds it and you hit a bear like when my dogs will strike a bear once they get it going you're kind of just hanging out so yeah. i start i'll always just walk around and you know god you can smell that you know and you'll always find something dead that the bears and what's funny i don't know how it is up there but here the bears don't eat like i was saying with the dead cow a bear won't eat that dead cow until it is the rottenest maggot infested stinky just the grossest and i swear they go there and just eat the maggots and then they leave and will come back and eat those maggots the next day. Dude, that's actually, I've never thought of it like that. That actually makes sense. There are a bunch yeah. of uh, grub worms just like going for yep. it. Yeah. Interesting. And I mean, I've struck them off the side of the road and you'll be walking around. I caught this one bear and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I, there was a big old ant pile sitting there and the bear only went like 500 yards and climbed a tree and we got to the tree and the bear was covered in ants. I mean, they were just everywhere on it. They were coming down the tree. He climbed up in this big old quakey and they were just ants everywhere. <laughs> that is so awesome. I love it. Um, you know, what's interesting is I have a, a couple guys that I like to coyote hunt with and they always like to have me out and they're, they work on ranches and stuff like that. And they're always like, Hey, this last time hey man we got a dead pile it's gonna be awesome hunting (laughs) (laughs) it's like oh yeah and so on on uh one of our coyote hunts on soul seekers on carbon tv we do thermals and i i got my crosshairs on this on this coyote you can see it it it's looking like it's right munching on this dead pile i end up shooting it and this was was well, breeding season. This was February last year, maybe January. Yeah. I forget exactly, but um, I shoot, and I thought I had this coyote dead to rights. But the way thermals were working, it ended up being one coyote humping another one, and I shot like completely <laughs> in between them. <laughs> but dead piles, man. I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> it's where it's at. <laughs> Yeah, all of a sudden, like six coyotes are running all sorts of different directions, and there's cows in the field and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, holy <laughs> smokes, what the heck just happened here? <laughs> all off the dead pile. Dude, the dead pile. Yeah, I know. Well, so you, you not only are you a houndsman, but you also are a guide, right? So you work yeah. in an outfitter, yep. so you get to understand where those gut piles are at. <clears throat> yep, yep. I do a lot of elk hunting for out different outfitters and yeah it works out i love it i love it tj is there anything that i'm missing that you feel like we need to cover because like i said i'm in unfamiliar territory when it comes to hound hunting for bears no i think we pretty well covered the whole thing I, yeah it's just mostly about the dogs man not so much about killing the bear it's just about the dogs and the dog work yeah. That's about it. It's about, it's so interesting. You know, Jana, she always says it's about living. I am always talking about how it's all about community. And at the end of the day, whether the community is a, a houndsman with his hounds or hunters with fellow hunters or whatever, like we're living, we are doing, we're not, you know, Master Yoda, there is yeah. no try, there is only do or do not. And when you are working that life and being in community and pursuing the wild, there's no greater thing. No greater thing. Yeah. It is awesome. It is awesome, man. Dude, I love it. TJ, you are a savage. I can't wait to hunt with you someday, brother. I really am looking forward to this. Everybody, you guys, if you are listening to this episode and being like, wow, I've never thought about hound hunting for bears, or maybe it's even hound hunting for cats, whatever it is, like yeah. 
don't be afraid and don't shy away from predator hunting. Don't shy away from hunting with hounds because you will find yourself falling in love with these things. And I can tell you that from experience because not that I've done it with hounds, but the concept of like everyone has an opinion. Very few people have perspectives. And the minute that you immerse yourself into an experience and have a perspective, your life is transformed. And that's where the transformation through primal adventure happens. TJ, you're a stud. You're a savage, brother. I can't wait to see you at the Expo here in two weeks. Be blessed. (laughs) Thanks for coming on, man. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Go follow TJ on Instagram. Go let him know what you thought of this episode. If you're coming to the Expo and you uh, come to the seminar, you'll get a chance to shake TJ's hand and uh, give him an old high five. But Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Be blessed. Know that life is happening for you. It's not happening to you. We are not the results of the circumstances in our lives as we get to create our own existence each and every day. Be blessed, everybody. Freedom on. And as always, stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter Podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter Podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful.